Hi there, in this video we're going to continue our discussion of hyperbolic trig functions. And so let's start with this example. Find an equation of the line normal to the graph of y equals x, hyperbolic sine of x at x equals 1. I was going to say cinch. So x cinch x at x equals 1. Um, and there is an invisible times there. So this is x times cinch x. So that means we need the product rule when we differentiate. And why do we need to differentiate? Because we want the equation of the line normal. So let's review what is a normal line. So normal line to the graph, to a curve, is perpendicular to the tangent line. So we need to find essentially the slope of the tangent line and then find the perpendicular slope to that. Either way, we need to take the derivative. So y is x times cinch x. So let's find the derivative. So y prime then will be using the product rule. This will be the derivative of the first. So 1 times the second left alone. So cinch of x left alone plus product rule the first left alone times the derivative of the second. The, der the derivative of cinch x is cosh of x. And so that is our derivative. Now we want to find it at when the value when x is equal to 1. So when x equals 1, we're going to have y prime equals cinch of 1 plus 1 times cosh of 1. All right, so let's evaluate that. And here we can put in our definition of cinch and our definitions of cosh. So cinch is e to the x, so it'll be e to the 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2. And then 1 times cosh is just cosh, so e to the 1 plus e to the minus 1 all over 2. Because this have the same denominator, we can combine them all into the common denominator to 2. So I'm going to have e minus e to the minus 1 plus e plus e to the minus 1. So notice that here, then my e to the minus 1's 0 out, giving me e plus e, which is 2e over 2, which is then just e. So what did I just find? We found the slope, since this is y prime, we just found the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is m equals y prime, which is e. But what we want is the slope of the normal line. But we know that the slope of the normal line is equal to the perpendicular slope of the tangent line. So this is going to be equal to negative 1 over m. So in this case, this is going to be negative 1 over e. So this is the slope that we want. So this is the slope for the normal line. So now we can put it all together. So we want the equation of the normal line. So now we can say the equation of the normal line will be y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So we know the x value is 1. So what are the things that we know? We know m is negative 1 over e, right? The, the negative reciprocal of the tangent line slope. And the point is x is 1. Do we know the y value? Was that given to us? No, it just says that x equals 1, but we know y equals x cinch x. So the point will be cinch x, oh, 1 times cinch of x. So just cinch of 1. And so let's put it together into our point slope form. So it will be y minus y1, so y minus cinch of 1 
which we know is e to the 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2. So e to the 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2 equals m, so negative 1 over e, times x minus 1. If you want, you can just leave that as cinch of 1. Uh, pay attention on your homework system, web assign, what is it doing? So is it leaving it as cinch 1, or is it actually plugging it into the definition of cinch, or cosh, or um, hyperbolic tangent, whatever the function may be. So that was an example using the product rule. So how about we try an example that requires the quotient rule. So say find y prime for y equals, let's do cosh of x squared plus 5 to the x. So how do you find a derivative of something like this? Um, because it's not just cosh of x, now we have cosh of stuff, we need the chain rule. Um, by the way, I know that the derivative of just cosh of x is cinch, no negative in this case. And uh, so with the chain rule, I'm going to have y prime is the outside is cosh, so I'm going to have the derivative of the outside, so cinch of the inside left alone. And then by the chain rule times the derivative of that inside. And so let's find what the derivative of this is. And notice, pay attention that that's an exponential 5 to the x. So then this will be y prime is equal to cinch of x squared plus 5 to the x, and then times the derivative of that. So here the derivative of x squared is 2x plus, what's the derivative of an exponential? 5 to the x, the base is 5 here. So the derivative of an exponential, you get always get the exponential back, so 5 to the x times the natural log of the base, not of the exponent, the natural log of the base. And so that will be our final derivative. So if I was evaluating it this at some point, like say 0, then I would plug that in and evaluate. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic trig functions. So, our hyperbolic trig function inverses are going to be, we have our cinch inverse of x, cosh inverse of x, and so on. All of them have inverses as well. And the formulas for this, they're kind of complicated on how to get get them. So I'm going to give you the one for cinch. The formula for sin, cinch inverse of x is the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, where x is in the real numbers. And I can give you the one for cosh as well. So the one for cosh inverse is the natural log of x minus the square root of x squared plus 1. And these, without going into the full proof of this, is because when you have, um, let's do, let's take cinch inverse. So when you have y equals cinch inverse of x, what this means, that it means that sine cinch of y is equal to x, right? So apply cinch to both sides. And so you'll have cinch of y is equal to x. And then from here, what we can say is, well, but cinch y is e to the y minus e to the minus y over 2 equals x. And then from here, some algebra ensues. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of walk you through part of it. So multiply both sides by 2. And so we'll have 2x. And then what ends up happening is we set it equal to 0. So you're going to have 0 is equal to, so subtract this to the other side. Um, actually, I want to bring the, the 2x over to the, to the left. So I'm going to have e to the y minus 2x minus e to the minus y equals 0. And then when you do a little bit more work here, e to the y to the negative y mean, really means e to the 1 over e to the y 
equals zero. And this is where things get a little dicey in terms of the algebra, um, because then it's like, okay, I, I don't want a denominator. I want to be able to have just a single expression without denominators. So what we do is we multiply both sides by the denominator we don't want. So we don't want e to the y, so multiply everything by e to the y. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And now we distribute this in here, right? So then you're going to have e to the 2y minus, because e to the y times e to the y, when you multiply the same basis, you add exponents. y plus y is usually 2y, and then 2x times e to the y, so you just get 2x e to the y minus e to the y times 1 over e to the y, that goes away, which is what we intended. That's the reason we multiply by e to the y. And, right, so this is the thing that is like, what is this? So imagine if this was um, t squared minus 2x times t minus 1 equals 0. What would you do? And so that's what happens here. So you end up solving for e to the y. So the, the e to the y is kind of like your t. And so you end up with e to the y equals stuff. So we use the quadratic formula here to solve for it. And then to get y by itself, you get, you take the natural log of both sides and that's how you end up with the ln of x plus the square root of x squared plus one. So this kind of leads you to that. So I ended up doing most of it, but I just wanted to, there is some algebra in here, but it really comes from the cinch inverse of x, meaning that cinch of y is equal to x. And so that's where these formulas come from. And you can do the same thing for Cauch inverse and the same for hyperbolic tangent inverse and all the other ones. So that's what um, cinch inverse is equal to. So we can say, therefore, cinch inverse of x is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus one. And you can do the same thing for the other ones. But now what I'm really after is the derivative. So we want to find the derivative of cinch inverse of x. So prime. And so I could take the derivative of this and do the chain rule, but I'm going to use the idea from before, right? So if I have y equals um, cinch inverse of x and I want to find y prime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do implicit differentiation. So take cinch of both sides. So I'm going to have then cinch of y is equal to cinch of cinch inverse of x. So I just get x. And from here, I'm going to take the derivative implicitly. Right, so then what I'm going to get is when I take the derivative of this, the derivative of cinch is cosh. So I'm going to have cosh of y times y prime because I'm taking the derivative implicitly and the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So this tells me that y prime is 1 over cosh of y, which is hyperbolic secant of y. But now I have it in terms of y. So then I'm going to bring in our triangle and we're going to find that. So now the thing to remember here is that this point, right, is on the hyperbolic, um, the unit hyperbola. So this is from unit hyperbola is where this triangle comes from. So as opposed to in the unit circle, right? It comes from the unit circle. So from unit hyperbola. So what that means is that when I have A and B, um, my equation is really, or my identity is one is equal to A squared minus B squared, right? Because it's different. And so looking at this, where was our um, so cinch of y equals x, so that's still x over 1. So if I put y on my 
triangle over here y is so let me redraw my triangle so I know cinch of y equals x so I'll just redraw it over here y is there so that means that x is here and 1 is the hypotenuse and so how do I find the a here so I know that 1 is equal to a square minus x square right in this case x is the b so solve for a so 1 plus x square equals a square so a is the square root of 1 plus x square and hyperbolic secant secant is adjacent over um, hypotenuse no that's cosine hyperbolic cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so hyperbolic secant is hypotenuse over adjacent so 1 over a so therefore I can say y prime is 1 the hypotenuse over the side that we just found the square root of 1 plus x squared And if you do it by using the definition that we came up with with for sin, cinch inverse over here, you do 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of that. Um, it's just that the derivative of this is really intense, right? The chain rule there. So um, we can just do this. And so that's my derivative. So therefore, I can say, and I'm going to give you the derivatives for all the other inverse hyperbolic trig functions. So I know that for cinch inverse of x then the derivative is 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now for Cauch inverse we can do it the same way that we did and the derivative here is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Oh sorry x squared minus 1. x squared minus 1 and then you can go through all the other ones now this I'm going to tell you right away this will be a good section to bookmark save this notes um, once you take the notes for when you are in calc 2 doing section 7.3 that will be my hint <laughs> once you get to calc 2 and you're working on section 7.3 be like wait in Calc 1, I was told to come back to this notes, and you'll see why. This will save you so much time in Calc 2. And the when I have hyperbolic tangent inverse of x, the derivative of this is 1 over 1 minus x squared. And there you have the other ones, cosecant inverse, cotangent inverse, and those are in your book. Mainly they are negatives, but the one that I am going to give you because in again in calc 2 it comes up quite a bit it is the inverse secant the derivative is negative 1 over x times the square root of 1 minus x squared and those are the main derivatives that then come up in calc 2 so in calc 2 you're going backwards so you're doing antiderivatives and so this these problems when you see the backwards way right like finding the the antiderivative of these in calc 2 is a very intense process of how to find it but then when you know when you recognize that wait a minute these are the the derivatives of my hyperbolic inverse trig functions then a 20 minute problem now has turned into a 45 second problem so remember these bookmark them make yourself a note need them in calc 3 section 7.3 if you're using the same book Stuart. so something to keep in mind now in order to find derivatives using this let's try an example all right let's try this quick example find the derivative f prime of x for this function f of x is x to the fourth plus one over x minus inverse tangent of 2x plus hyperbolic cosine inverse of x so first thing notice that I have that 1 over x so I need to rewrite it so let's rewrite this function I'm not taking the derivative yet so it'll be x to the fourth plus x to the minus 1 minus inverse tangent of 2x so I have this is just inverse tangent and then I need a chain rule there plus 
hyperbolic cosine, cosine inverse of x. So f prime of x is general power rule here, so 4x to the third, general power rule there, minus 1x to the minus 2, minus, now here I need to remember my derivative of inverse tangent, inverse tangent, and I have a chain rule. So inverse tangent of stuff is 1 over 1 plus the stuff square, and then my chain rule times the derivative of the stuff, and then plus, now my derivative of hyperbolic cosine inverse, which we wrote up here, is 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. So this will be 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. And lastly, just simplify it. So f prime of x will be 4x to the third minus 1 over x squared. Rewriting that, whoops. So it's that 1 over x squared. Rewriting that with a positive exponent. And then minus, let's see, that's the 2, which is what's the derivative of the inside of that inverse tangent. So 2 over 1 plus 4x squared. So here, don't forget to include the coefficient when you square it, plus 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. You do not have to get a common denominator. You can just leave your um, derivative like this. So this will be your final answer. Now lastly, just remember that if you happen to have any sort of chain rules, so say if f of x equals cinch inverse of 7x plus 1, what's the derivative? So find f prime of x. So here, right, you have a chain rule. You have um, hyperbolic sine inverse of stuff. So f prime will be the derivative of hyperbolic sine inverse. So 1 over the square root of the stuff square. So 7x plus 1 quantity square and then plus 1 times by chain rule the derivative of that inside. Right. So be careful not to take the derivative inside in the first step, you leave the inside alone in the first step and then you do times the derivative of the inside. So this will be just 7 over the square root of, and I think I wrote it backwards, it doesn't matter, right? addition is commutative, so I could say 1 plus the stuff square or like I said here, 7x plus 1 square and then plus 1. And again, don't worry about multiplying that all out, you can just leave it like that. Um, if you if it marks it wrong in the homework system in WebAssign, then you can multiply it out and see if that is correct. But it should accept this answer. All right, email me if you have any questions.